Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. ML Flow is a really popular open source project that helps you keep track of your machine learning experiments and visualize them. Well, in this video, I would like to show you how you can easily use the Transformers library with ML Flow. Okay, we're gonna run a notebook, log some metrics, visualize them. So let's get started. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with a simple transformer training job and I'm using Distilbert on the IMDB dataset for uh, movie review classification, but you could really use your own code. You know, it doesn't really matter what training job we're running here. This is completely generic. So we're going to run this thing and it's going to log some ML flow information, parameters, metrics, etc. And we're going to visualize that because it's a simple format that we can load. Uh, we're going to push everything to the Hugging Face Hub, uh, the model and the logs, because it's, I guess, good practice to keep everything in the same place. And then I'll show you how you can just uh, grab that information from uh, the hub and load it in the MLflow UI. And as you'll see, it's all super simple. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, let me go full screen here. And well, first things first, I guess uh, we're going to install some uh, some dependencies and as you will see uh, you don't need to change any of your transformer code to use mlflow the only requirement is that mlflow is installed okay and please make sure it's installed in the actual environment where your python code runs so that means your virtual environment or your your conda kernel okay uh, if it's installed outside of that and your Python code cannot actually see it, it's not going to work, okay? Uh, so here I just um, made it simple and installed it in the notebook, but probably you would want to install it in your conda kernel in this case, okay? So that's really the only uh, gotcha, I think. Um, then we need to have uh, git lfs enabled because we're going to push the model back to the hub, so we run those usual commands, okay? Then we uh, import a few things and uh, we log in to the Hugging Face Hub. Okay, and here I'm using Notebook Login, but again, you could use the uh, Hugging Face CLI to do that. That will allow us to push uh, files to the hub. Okay, and now we, we move on to uh, our actual training job. So I'm loading the uh, IMDB dataset, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Uh, movie reviews, either positive or negative. Uh, very good data set to uh, experiment with, not too big. Um, and then I'm loading the model and the tokenizer for uh, Distilbert. Okay, and we have two labels again, positive and negative. And that, I think that's the default value, but I, you know, I always prefer setting that just to, uh, you know, grow that habit and uh, avoid problems when I have actually more than two labels. And then a tokenizing function to uh, tokenize the movie reviews in the data set. So, you know, always the same thing. Uh, pad and truncate, okay, and apply that to the training set and the test set. All right. So business as usual here. Then, uh, again, a very simple metrics function to compute accuracy. Very simple. And then I could configure a little bit my uh, my ML flow experiment, right? So, you know, in a nutshell, ML flow organizes your projects as experiments and runs. Okay, so one experiment can have multiple runs. And the first thing we need to do, of course, is to set the experiment name. So where did I find this uh, slightly obscure environment variable? Well, I found it in the transformers documentation. So if you go to the callbacks page and look for ML flow callback, you'll find this blob here that tells you a little bit about the configuration that you can do, right? Uh, so you can decide to log artifacts. You can decide to set the experiment name. You can add some tags to your, um, uh, to your run. I can all nested runs, uh, you can attach to existing run IDs, and you can flatten parameters. So either passing one single dictionary or individual parameters. 
okay and that's all there is to it uh, there's nothing else you need to uh, you need to configure so here you know I just went for hey uh, let's set the experiment name let's flatten the parameters and still, since I'm logging locally, um, obviously the model will already be saved by the trainer API. So, you know, it's not really useful to log artifacts, but if you were working with an external MLflow server, um, you could, you, could uh, you know, send those artifacts uh, to the server and the server could log them, you know, wherever it wants in S3 or locally over there, et cetera, et cetera. But here I just went for the, the simple use case where I just run stuff locally and I don't have a tracking server. Okay, just logging that stuff to local storage. Uh, training arguments, uh, well, nothing special here. Uh, we'll just train for one epoch. This is where we'll push the model and that's about it. Okay, and then put everything together in the trainer API. And as you can see, you know, there's really nothing about MLflow here, right? Uh, the only thing I did was name the experiment. Um, that, that callback is enabled by default, provided that MLflow is uh, accessible on, on the path, so to speak. And I guess you could go and tweak it and, and explicitly add it if you, you know, if you wanted to. But, you know, here, uh, I'll just go with the defaults. Okay, and then we'll launch training. And I can see this message telling me, okay, I'm creating this new experiment because it does not exist. Otherwise, it would probably have added the run to, uh, to the existing experiment. And then it trains for a little bit. I see some logging information. I see the model being saved. And yeah, that's it, right? So um, transformers, as usual, no change. Uh, and Hopefully, in the background, some stuff was logged to MLflow. Uh, we need to end the run. Uh, I read somewhere in the doc that the run is not explicitly closed. Uh, it's probably on that page. Um, but yeah, I, I found it someplace. Uh, so uh, <laughs> I did not invent it. Uh, it it's written somewhere. Um, so yeah, there you go. Uh, closing the run so that you know, a new iteration of the notebook will uh, will just generate a new run. And then push everything to the hub, okay? And so at this point, of course, I have um, a new model repository with the model card and, you know, the model files in there, nothing new. Uh, and, you know, what I want to do is I want to keep um, those um, um, that, that ML flow information, those ML runs, um, in the same repo because you know it's it's all useful information on how the training job went uh, and all the parameters etc so uh, what i'm really doing is super simple i'm just copying the ml runs folder which is created by ml flow as we run the um, as we run the job okay it's created locally again i am not using a, a tracking server and I'm simply copying this to the output um, directory, which is where uh, the repo lives, okay, the model repo lives. And I just add and commit and push, okay. And uh, as you would expect, I see those ML runs in there, okay. Well, that's only one run, really. Okay, so I see my, um, my metrics and everything else, right. So now you have everything in the same place, which I guess... Is practical okay so what else could we do with that information well I guess we would want to visualize it so we have the information locally right now uh, we can see it here and the format for all those files is is really really super simple and let's just look maybe at one of those um, let's look at I don't know loss and there you go right could be simpler so it's really, you know, it's a CSV format with a space separation, right? So it's an a SSV, right? Space separated value file, if there is such a thing. So, um, so yeah, so that means I can very easily load it, right? I could just, I could just do something like this, you know? I could use pandas read CSV with the file, uh, the metric uh, file. Uh, space separator, just give co the columns a name, 
and that's it right and i can just plot it you know using steps uh, on the x-axis and, and and values on the y-axis so very easily with those local uh, uh ml flow files i can build my plots right there in the notebook right i don't even need the ml flow ui if uh, if i want to do that stuff right uh yeah so i can plot the learning rate i can plot all of it right if i had multiple runs it'd be very easy to just uh you know modify that function and just plot everything in the notebook okay so that's a very easy way to do it now obviously um you certainly want to use the um uh the ml flow ui right and uh, we could do that easily as well so all we need to do is really uh, let's just grab a terminal here And let's go to that repo, okay? And I could just do something like this. Um, just zip that ML runs folder, okay? Which is not big because it doesn't, it doesn't have the, uh, the artifacts. And now I can just go and grab that thing, download it to my local machine or my MLflow server or you know anywhere convenient. And I can just go and um, let's grab that. Um, yep, whoops, let's grab that file, move it here, zip it. Okay, so now you know, I've got my ML runs and if I just go MLflow UI, I should see that thing come into life. Okay, and of course I will need to open that URL. So I see my um, my MLflow experiment here and there's only one run, right? So we can just go and open that. And, you know, sure enough, we see all the parameters for the training job. And obviously we'll see the metrics right and we can just click on any of those and we'll see the plot right so that's a really easy way i think you know to uh, of course to to document your uh, transformer training jobs you know just make sure you have ml flow on your uh, in your environment in your python environment and uh, and just save those um, those runs to the model repo and uh, you can just go and, and clone them again. Here I zipped them and, and downloaded them from the notebook, but obviously, you know, they live in that repo, right? So um, anytime you're going to clone that, and why, well, yeah, let's do it. Let's just prove that point. Um, yeah, let's do this. Okay, let's kill this thing here. Uh, clone the repo. Okay, so we've cloned the repo, we can see it here. Uh, and of course it has that uh, ML runs folder. And if we start the ML flow UI again. Okay, and open that. Of course, we will see the information, right? Yes. Okay, so yeah, that's a really convenient way to keep all those logs next to the model in the same place. So there you go. Uh, very, very easy, very simple. Um, there's really no code to write, which, you know, I always enjoy, <laughs> you know, being lazy and all. So again, just make sure you have MLflow in your environment um, and, and there you're all set, right? Um, and you're all set. And you'll have those runs uh, available locally. And if you push them to your model repo, just like I did here, it's very easy once you clone a model to visualize that information again. Okay, so I'm sure there's more we could do on MLflow. Um, and um, I'll create a, a discussion on the Hugging Face forum. So uh, I'll include the, the link to that in the video description. So if, uh, if you have ideas on how we could uh, make MLflow and Transformers better, maybe integrate some visualization on the hub. Why not? Uh, you know, join the discussion and, and let us know what you like. Okay. But in any case, I think that's already useful. Well, we could always do more. Okay. Well, I hope this was interesting. I hope this was useful. And uh, thanks for watching. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.